Hi, and welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, we're going to cover all the aspects of every upgrade and every modification and change to my racing Cougar Classic from Schumacher Racing. Now, on the Noob Goes Racing, we're now moving over to the team associated RC10B 6.4. Now, I will keep running the Schumacher Cougar. But it won't be directly on the show. I'll just be using it for setting times and comparisons. But now that the project is pretty much finished, I thought we would go through every single upgrade that's on the car, modification and change, so that if you have one of these and you're thinking, oh, I wonder how you got that from, I'll try and cover as much as possible. Now, this has taken quite a long time to get to this stage because I've changed so much. I've also put parts on, taken parts off. I'll try and cover as much as I can in as much detail for you. So we'll start at the front and work our way through the whole car. So right at the front, the first thing is this brace here. Now this is a carbon brace that uh, basically holds the uh, hinge pins so that when you whack the wheel, it's actually gonna give it a bit more support across the front. I actually have two versions of this. The first one that you see actually on the car now is a three mil thick, I think it is. This came from the same guy who made me the carbon tower that you see here. Now he sells these on eBay, so you can actually go and pick these up quite easily. This one's slightly different because I spoke to him about it he's made this one in three mil so it's really strong the idea is because another thing with this car is because I'll take it racing I want it to be as reliable as possible as well I don't want it to break and being that my driving is not that great so I've tried to beef up things as well so the three mil tower is a really strong one and I've had a pro cat come straight into this in the opposite direction after a jump and it didn't break it at all. Now to make this fit into the slot in the front bulkhead, you've got to shave it down a little bit. So that's a slight modification because really you should be looking at two mil, but I wanted to get a three mil one because it's. I want it to be really strong because it's bound to take a few hits. And also when the car flips over, the two highest points is the spoiler and this front here. So to protect all the rest of the car, I wanted these two parts to be really strong. We'll get onto the spoiler later on. I've just upgraded, and I haven't even raced it yet, these front arms. Now these front arms have just been released. I got these from uh, JC Racing. They are made by MSP RC. Uh, 30 pound for two front arms. So I haven't even run these yet, but I can tell you that the actual fitment was brilliant. There is no shims in these front arms at all, and there is no play whatsoever. Now I had some vintage Cougar 2 Works arms in here, and I had to shim the life out of them to keep them from wobbling around all over the place. So uh, I don't know, it does change the wheelbase going from the Cougar 2 Works because the they really push the wheels back shortening the wheelbase which is probably good for the kind of track that I was running on because I run on the South Cambridge racetrack and it's very technical and small not massive open areas but we'll see when I go racing tomorrow they also do a pin set that you can buy as well which is what you can see here now it comes with the pins for the uprights this pin here the, that one that one and that one and that one obviously so these are titanium and they're pretty beefy which is really good as well so those and the brace make this front end really nice and strong front pin set is quite expensive at 46 pound but it also comes with a carbon brace but the carbon brace that comes with the pin set is only two mil i think it is so it wasn't as beefy as this one so i stuck with this one i have got the other one as spare which will go on my uh, Cougar 2 that I'm restoring off camera at the moment. Then you've got the uprights you see here in purple. They are alloy front yokes. They're from the Rascal and Riot. They're £11.99 from Schumacher directly. They're out of stock at the moment, but they are definitely worth getting. Super happy with those. Now the tyres, these are Schumacher cut staggered yellow uh, compound now I don't normally run these these are brand new I'm just trying something a little bit different for tomorrow's racing I normally run these from JC racing but these are starting to wear out uh, also these are kind of like a lower profile one so I'm gonna try these and these are a lot more softer um, also something else I'm gonna try at the moment is I've got the droop a lot more than I normally have usually my droop is like this so having a little bit more and a little bit softer tires, I'm hoping the front's gonna bite a little bit longer so I can lean on the front 
under power a bit more. If I could just ask you to take two seconds if you've watched the videos and you've watched a few and you enjoy it to hit that subscribe button. 58.6% of you that watch the channel aren't even subscribed. It costs you absolutely nothing. And being that we're such a small RC channel, every new subscriber really helps the algorithm find our content and push it out to more RC fans like you. Right, grab that 6S battery, plug it into that 3S ESC, let that magic smoke out, and I take a good whiff. Anyway, we digress to calibrations. But the front wheels are standard uh, at the moment, but I will be getting some more of these in black and changing them if I like these. But I wanted to try them first. Next, obviously the body. This is not a Cougar Classic body. This is a reproduction Cougar 2, and I like it so much more. It's more sleek. Also, it's not as high up as well, so it keeps everything nice and low. Now I painted it in smoke so you can see through it for two reasons. One, it's nice and easy. So uh, when it gets damaged, I could replace this without doing loads of work. And two, it, it weighs almost nothing. The paint is super light, so it doesn't add any extra weight. Not that it makes a great deal of difference, but hey, every bit counts. The front bulkhead is standard, but I've actually inserted some spacers in here. Now the reason there are in spacers in here is to push the front down because it's racing on carpet. I want the front nose to be pointing down as much as possible. The steering is totally bespoke. This was made for me by Phil. He actually made these when I broke it quite recently. So he's made these. These are a one-off and they are beautiful and they work brilliantly. I've taken them racing. Also a little bit extra weight over the nose is helpful. The actual steering bridge or whatever you want to call it, that's in carbon. That's obviously an upgrade as well. Next is a big one is the chassis. Now this is a little bit special. This is from MSP RC. Now when uh, I found out that they're trying to actually get enough orders together, pre-orders together to be able to kick off this project of making these carbon chassis, I said I'd help out and do a bit of promotion for them. And uh, part of the agreement was that they were going to give me a prototype one. So, uh, and it's turned out to be a massive success and they've sold loads. And I think they've done two batches of these and they're now moving on to a third. And they've also got a reseller in the UK as well. So it's really good to see them growing. And then obviously after doing the carbon, they did all the arms, which we'll come on to again as well. So I was super chuffed to be part of that. And this chassis is special, as you can see here. This is a prototype two chassis and that's the date and the serial number one. So the story behind the chassis is they made the first prototypes and the kick up at the back was wrong. It was too steep. So they went on to the prototype two where they fixed the kick up at the back, which is what this is. And this is number two, this is number one. So this is the first one from that second batch, which turned out to be the actual ones that have gone into production. So to have something a little bit special on this is, is brilliant. I also bought another one of these chassis, which is gonna go on my Cougar 2 when I'm restoring, or I might keep it as a spare one. But I must admit, I have crashed this and bashed the living daylights out of it. I broke parts on the back and the actual chassis is holding up lovely. I've got no issues with this one at all. To buy one of these, uh, you can get them from JC Racing. I think they're at 120 pound or give or take. So a big upgrade, super chuffed with that one. Next, uh, moving our way along, then I run a Reef RC 299 low profile servo. Love these, absolutely brilliant. Not the cheapest in the world, but they take a hell of a battering and they are crazy fast. So that's the servo. And the, the electronics you see in this car will be what's in my new racing buggy. Moving further down, the receiver, FlySky receiver. Uh, I went with this one after the uh, previous versions because it's got no antenna, so it keeps everything a little bit cleaner. Then the uprights, these uprights are the alloy ones from Schumacher Racing. Then the lightweight nuts on the top. These are really nice. You can get uh, other versions of these, but these ones are from Schumacher. Our U7424, 12 pound 18, these are. Now these carbon battery covers that you see here, these are not from a Cougar, these are from the XLS. So uh, they don't actually do a carbon one for the Cougar that has the bit in the middle, but I use these because I like them because you just take one off 
loosen it off a bit and slide the battery in and then do it up. So this works really well and I can recommend it. So that gives you then the carbon battery stays. Also got the battery pushed as far forward as possible. Transponder, nothing super special about that. That's an MRT. I think they're about 40, 50 pound. Then I've got the ESE is an XR10, just stock. Really like this. I think I've got it as a combo for about a hundred pound, 110 pound. And it came with the motor we'll come on to later. I'm pretty happy with it. Yes, I could upgrade to something a bit better, but uh, for the price point, I was really happy and it's got loads of power. Next, we've got a brace here. This brace I actually made myself. These are just, uh, I think, 20 mil standoffs. Uh, really, you need about 19, so I had to put a, sh a shim in there. The, this carbon bits I made myself. I just cut up an old one of these, basically, uh, from a different car, and then I just made it. You have to shave it down a little bit. Now, the idea of this is to give a little bit more support from the back of the car when it gets hit, that it tries to turn up to stress the bottom of the chassis. So you can make those. Some companies do sell those but I just made my own. All the screws uh, have been changed to titanium. Then the bulkhead that I've just fitted now, this is a Cougar 2 bulkhead. Uh, I've actually borrowed this one from my Cougar 2 um, because I've got another one coming that was gonna go in this, but it's a bit late for tomorrow's racing. The shocks, they're obviously Schumacher Big Bore shocks. Now I had these already, so I didn't buy these, but you can buy them. These are both long versions, but you can have the mid size ones. Schumacher also does this carbon mount up here, which is really thick, huge. That's worked really well. Uh, I also changed the wing mounts. These are different ones. So it has got flex up here. I'm not sure what they come from. I can't remember now um, because when you, when you buy this carbon tower, it changes this spoiler to be fixed. Whereas having the flexible one, I like that when I roll over, it helps dissipate some of the impact. Now we get onto the back of the car where it just keeps, <laughs> there's more and more bods all the time. The spoiler came from JC Racing. I like this, not only from it looks nice, but it helps when the car rolls over a lot. This is obviously really hard. So uh, it, it takes a lot of the beating the car gets uh, and obviously being flexible, it helps as well. The hubs, these are from Cougar 2, these are not the original ones. And the reason we have those is you have two adjustments you can make. So it's all to help dial in the back of the car and keeping all the camber under control. The rear arms, again, from uh, MSC Racing. These have been out for a while now and I'm pretty happy with them. I did have one that was drilled out too much and it had too much play in it, so I bought another one. But the other ones that I've got have been fine. So if you get too much play in it, just speak to them about that but I'll end up putting the other set that I've got on my shelf queen, so I'm not that bothered. So let's look at the gearbox, and this is where it all gets completely out of control. Now, the actual belt tensioning, eccentric, or whatever you want to call them, those are alloy from Schumacher Racing. Then you've got the bearing carrier here, those ones. Uh, there's one on there and one on the other side. They're in aluminium, you can get those online. Now this part here, which is normally in plastic, this one is a alloy version of it. This was gifted to me when I was out racing. Super kind as these are ultra rare, really difficult to get and no one really makes them at the moment. There's always been like two versions of this one. There's one that's got the heat sink on it and then there's this one. Also, I'm running the carbon sides to the gearbox. Now you could argue that this is not a good thing to do from a heat dissipation point of view, but this runs super cool. Being that it's a 10.5 turn, this never gets warm at all. It's super cold, um, so I wasn't bothered, so a bit of bling. But this flexes quite a lot until you put this, it locks it into place. So when I first fitted this, I, I thought, well, oh, I'm not overly sold on it, but as soon as you put this plate in, there's a groove cut into this at the back. It all kind of locks together and it works really well and it looks really cool. Inside here is a pro transmission, standard Schumacher stuff with the slipper. The only thing left to upgrade on the on this car is these to the alloy drive shafts but they are super expensive and really hard to get hold of. I do have a set 
for my Cougar 2, but uh, I'm quite happy using these. At some point, maybe I'll get hold of a set and then I'll fit them. The idea is that under load, when these flex, this slides in and out. And when it's under load, it kind of has uh, tension on it. So the alloy ones were designed so that you could flex in and out, even under load. So they were better upgrade than these but a set's gonna a new set will probably cost you about a hundred pound where these are cheap as chips but you still got to keep an eye on these as they do do wear and they get a little bit notchy over time wheels and tires that i'm running these are from jc racing and that's the yokomo adapter so i can run yokomo tires the two reasons why i run these one they look really cool <laughs> and two they push the offset out a little bit more so it makes the car more stable obviously going around corners you lose a little bit of cornering but uh, grip rolling is not as much of an issue as your wheelbase is wider now the, another thing that i'm having made right now and i've managed to buy a set of originals these blocks are plastic and you can get alloy ones so i'm having some alloy ones made but i've also managed to buy a set of original ones which are in the beautiful kind of purple so I will fit them to the car. I was hoping they were going to be here for this video. All the way around, I have captive ball joints apart from the steering. The reason I don't have them in the steering is for clearance issues, but uh, having them... Now, this is obviously an issue. If you have a hard impact, you will probably bend something, but uh, they tend to pop off, so I've changed them. And then the rear, I don't have fixed ones on the inside. But I may change these now that I've fitted this bulkhead. I could actually change that. There's enough space. So I'll probably do that. There is a gear diff coming out for it. So I may do that. But I've never had any real issues with this one. So I may change it just for the sake of it. Just for reliability point of view. But, uh, and for interest. So I think that pretty much covers everything on this car. So uh, I hope you found it interesting.